What what constitutional problems does the protocol pose Northern Ireland, Jamie? Well, I think it's important to break this down into its constituent parts. So, I mean, if we start from the very basic premise of what is the union, uh, and while the union is fundamentally in a legal sense, the act of union, I mean, it is the very definition uh, of a constitutional statute. So the first problem uh, that arises in relation to the protocol is that uh, in making the treaty with the European Union, the, the, the British government exercised what's called the Crown prerogative. Now, it's a, it's a very basic and uh, uh, proposition of law that one cannot uh, use a prerogative in a, matter, in a manner which conflicts with statute and, and, and conflicts with uh, domestic law. Now, plainly, there's been a breach of Article 6 of the Act of Union, which is meant to ensure that all citizens of the United Kingdom are on a, uh, an equal footing in terms of treaties and in terms of uh, trade uh, and matters uh, such as, as that. So, therefore, in the exercise of the Crown prerogative, um, that is uh, was unlawful because plainly it interferes with um, the a, a, a domestic statute, timely legislation in the form of the Act of Union. So that's one constituent part of, of the legal problem with it. The second problem with it is that in Section 7A of the Withdrawal uh, Act 2018, uh, what it purports to do by use of very general and ambiguous words is to essentially repeal by implication, according to the government, the um, Article, well, certainly parts of Article 6 uh, of the Act of Union. And again, it's a very uh, basic uh, constitutional law point that, firstly, general words can't uh, override the specific, uh, which is purported to have happened in this case. Uh, and secondly, if you're going to interfere with either fundamental rights or a constitutional statute, which the Act of Union clearly, clearly is, then Parliament has to accept the political consequences of that. They have to do that expressly and clearly, uh, and reliance upon general or ambiguous words um, will not suffice. And I mean, Parliament had the opportunity, Parliament had the opportunity to, to expressly um, the, the Act of Union if they wanted to do so, and Parliament did not do that. So Section 7A of the Withdrawal Act has to give way to the Act of Union, which means that the imposition uh, of the, the protocol is unlawful. And just finally one point, uh, I, I mean, just as a, a little bit of support for the proposition that the crown prerogative uh, can't be used uh, to override um, statute in the form of domestic law. I mean, it's set out very clearly in a very famous case of Miller in 2017, the first Gina Miller case, and go to paragraph 55, and it's very clear the Crown prerogative can't be used in the manner in which it has been used in this. So all of this, whenever you take this together, uh, and I'm going to tie this very briefly to the Belfast Agreement, is that the Belfast Agreement, and, and I don't support it, I entirely oppose it, I think it's always been a deceptive snare, but let's take it at its height for those who do support it. It's always been sold to unionism that there are protections for the constitutional status uh, of Northern Ireland, and that's within section one, subsection one of the Northern Ireland Act. That's how the, the political deal, if you were, the Belfast Agreement translates into domestic law. Uh, but if, uh, in this instance, so if we take the, the government's case uh, 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 at its height, what they say is that, that number one, the Withdrawal Act has repealed the Act of Union, uh, and number two, and this is very clear, Northern Ireland are subject to foreign laws and under the jurisdiction of a foreign court. Now, if we just follow the logic of that through, if Northern Ireland, without the consent uh, of the people uh, or offending the protections within section one, subsection one of the 1998 Act, can be made subject to uh, the jurisdiction of foreign lawmakers and foreign courts, then what would stop Northern Ireland being made subject without the protections of section one, subsection one being offended? Uh, to the, um, the the jurisdiction of Dublin courts, or to law making uh, from from Dublin, or to joint authority, uh, and and the answer to that is if not if been addressed by the mainstream media in Northern Ireland and has not got the political attention it deserves, and it is this: uh, if the protections within Section One, Section or Section One, Subsection One, sorry, of the Northern Ireland Act does not protect against a substantive change to the status of Northern Ireland, so great as law-making power being handed over to a foreign uh, jurisdiction, uh, foreign laws made, taxation without representation, as it were, uh, and, and the jurisdiction of foreign courts. If, if it does not protect against that, then it doesn't protect against joint authority. I mean, that's a basic uh, logic uh, of, of all of that. Uh, and secondly, if the, the protections within Section 1, Subsection 1 of the 98 Act doesn't prevent against a repeal 
of the Act of Union, then I mean, what protections does uh, the Belfast Agreement and, and the Northern Ireland Act actually provide to the unionist community in, in practice? And there's a very fundamental question here. And the courts can't get away from this. And, and, and the, 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 the government can't get away from this. And the Irish government can't get away from this. And this is the, the very, very simple. And this is the, the Belfast Agreement and all the constructive ambiguity is now running out of space. And the, the fundamental question has to be answered. Is, does protecting the union and the protections for the unions mean protecting the substance of the union or does it merely mean protecting the symbolism of the union insofar as it only protects, the union, uh, to use a phrase adopted by John Mark and QC, it only protects against the last line of the union flag from Hillsborough Castle. And that is a fundamental question that the unionist and loyalist community of Northern Ireland and our political representatives must get an answer to because if it turns out to be the case, uh, that Northern Ireland can be handed over to a foreign power, uh, to a foreign uh, parliament, essentially to make laws on our bar, commission to make laws on, on our behalf, and the Act of Union can be repealed, and there's no protections in that uh, for consent within the Belfast Agreement. And what does the Belfast Agreement actually give uh, to the Unionist and Loyalist community? So the protocol's done anything, it, it, it's flooded uh, that issue.